We looked at mechanism of action and PKPD of aminoglycosides. Now the next learning objective is given a patient with a suspected gram-negative infection, determine a traditional empiric aminoglycoside maintenance dose and frequency based on population kinetics. Once you assess patient's body weight and creatinine clearance, the next step is to calculate population volume of distribution. And by population, we mean that these, these numbers are derived from population studies. So these are actually an estimate of what it would be in your patient. Because aminoglycosides are hydrophilic, they distribute primarily in the extracellular fluid. So fluid status is extremely important. In someone with normal fluid status, so in a general population, the estimated volume of distribution is about 0.25 liters per kilogram. Now, if someone is dehydrated, this volume of distribution will be reduced. So for the purpose of this class, we're gonna use the number 0.15 liters per kilogram. On the other hand, if someone is overhydrated, the volume of distribution will be increased. So we're gonna use 0.35 liters per kilogram in this class. Of course, some reasons for fluid, uh, fluid overload is heart failure, peritonitis, edema, ascites in patients with cirrhosis, pregnancy, and cystic fibrosis. You will learn about cirrhosis and ascites in your GI course. Now, of course, because these numbers are liters per kilogram, you have to make sure that you use the right number. So generally speaking, for a normal person, we're gonna use ideal body weight. If someone weighs less than their ideal body weight, you should use their actual body weight, which will be the smaller number. And in obese patient, we're gonna use adjusted body weight. By now, you know that the PKPD target for aminoglycosides are peak to MIC ratios and AUC to MIC ratios. For simplicity, we are only going to look at peak to MIC ratios in this class. So the target for peak for severe infections is 8 to 10, for moderate to mild infections is 6 to 8, for urinary tract infections is 4 to 6, and of course if you use aminoglycoside for synergy in gram-positive organisms, the peak will be 3 to 5. Now the peak is what tells you the efficacy, so the peak to MIC ratio should be these targets and that tells you efficacy. We also target trough for safety, so you, we want to have make sure that the trough is also less than two for all of these to make sure that we minimize the risk of nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity. Now the dosing for tobramycin and gentamicin are identical. So these targets are for both gentamicin and tobramycin. Now if you happen to be using amikacin, so these are the different uh, different targets for amikacin. So once you figure out what you want to target for your patient, next you, we need to actually calculate elimination constant before we can come up with the dose and frequency. So again, this is an, an estimate from population. So it's not going to be exactly the same K in your patient, but you know, empirically estimation is the best thing we can do. So this is the equation we're gonna use, uh, which includes creatinine clearance, and that will give you the K for your patient. And once you get your K, you will use this equation to get tau. Tau is frequency, so this is gonna tell you how frequently should you give the dose to your patient. And this is based on how, how the patient is actually able to clear it. So you basically plug in the uh, peak and trough goals. So if this is a severe infection, for the peak you're gonna write 10, and then for your trough you're gonna write, uh, let's say one, so you want it to be less than two. Uh, and then you plug in the K, and you solve for tau, and that tau will give you, um, how, will tell you how frequently you want to dose it. And of course, then we want to make round the tau to something realistic. Fre frequency uh, should be every, uh, you know, every 24 hours, every 12 hours, every eight hours, every six hours. So those are things that are regular. So you don't want to do something like every five hours or every seven hours. That's gonna make the schedule uh, hard to follow and it's going to make it very difficult for the nurses to administer the drug. So you want to use standardized uh, frequency. So if you get a tau uh, of 5, for example, you want to round it to the closest uh, standard frequency, which would be 6. So once you figure out the tau, after you round it to something realistic, then you're going to use this equation to come up with a dose. So let's say if you found the tau of five and rounded it to six, so you're gonna use six in this equation. You use the K that you got from up here. You put the target peak that you want. You want you put the volume of distribution from previous uh, slides uh, and the K again. 
and here you put the time of infusion. So for simplicity, we're gonna infuse aminoglycosides over one hour. Uh, so you just plug in one here. It is also common to use 30 minute infusion. If you were to use 30 minute infusion, you just have to put 0.5 here, which makes calculations uh, more difficult. It doesn't matter whether you do 30 minute infusion or one hour infusion, as long as you do, you get the dose right and the frequency. So I recommend that for making calculations more simple, just use the time of infusion of one. And when it comes to monitoring, we want to monitor both trough and peak. So the trough, you want to get it uh, within 30 minutes of prior, uh, prior to the third dose. So that's as close as uh, it gets to steady state. So you want to get the level before it gets to, uh, or actually close to the steady state. And then assuming that the level is at goal, you would just want to get the trough every three to five in most patients with stable renal function. Of course, more frequent monitoring would be required depending on the clinical status and also on renal uh, st status. Trough monitoring is for safety uh, and we do peak monitoring for efficacy. So the peak you want to do at least 30 minutes after the end of the infusion to a loss distribution uh, to the tissues. And of course, it's also important to monitor serum creatinine due to nephrotoxicity of aminoglycoside. So in stable renal function at minimum every three days, in someone with unstable renal function, you want to monitor daily.